Early education in the Genesee country developed out of the district system of New England, in which small neighborhood schools were supported by state and local taxes. Each district was responsible for building, maintaining, and staffing its own schools. As a result, the quality of education varied widely from district to district. In sparsely populated agricultural areas, schools couldn't be built any farther apart than four or five miles, mostly because the children had to walk to school. In most districts, there was only one teacher for all children up to about eighth grade. Teachers were often paid very little and could be as young as 16. Many didn't have much in the way of formal training themselves. Male teachers were preferred, but where it was necessary, women were hired as well, especially along the frontier. In the early days, there were no laws compelling children to go to school, so there are no records telling us the actual number of students who attended a school, like our 1822 Rush Schoolhouse, on any given day. However, we do know that at one time, there were about 60 students registered at this one-room schoolhouse. Since most of the people in the area at the time were farmers, many of the children would have been kept home regularly to complete their chores and help run the farm. Running a farm required tough manual labor, which was better suited to older boys, who were kept home more frequently. The school year followed the farm calendar. Classes were held in the summer and in the winter, but not in the spring, which was planting time, or fall, when the crops had to be harvested. Young girls often studied right alongside the boys when both could be spared from their duties at home. The subjects covered in public schools were very basic, reading, writing, and arithmetic, with a bit of history and geography. Moral lessons were also a large part of the curriculum, stressing an overall understanding of right and wrong. <laughs>